Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble the Sony, let's see, what is that, model, oh, it's too dark. There you go, PCG-21514L, right? They also have this um, product name, VPCL22DFX, alright? So let's go ahead and take this thing apart, okay? Um, we're just going to be doing like hard drive... Um, Okay, checking the hard drive and the RAM here. So I'm going to lift this up. All right. I'm not sure the customer wants to fix this computer because he said it's a 3-in-1. I don't know how it's a 3-in-1. I only see a 1-in-1. <laughs> Anyways, let's go ahead and get the screws out. Okay, these screws are pretty tough because they do have pretty long, um, uh, long thread. And then they also put thread locker on it. So... Yeah, here you go. You can see they put quite a bit of thread locker on there. So you want to make sure to be careful when taking this out. Um, the screws are really tight, and you want to make sure to push down really well so the screwdriver doesn't slip. You don't want to strip this screw, and then you're going to end up being stuck with that thing permanently in there. Okay? Um, removing this stand is a bit tough. It doesn't pop out super easily, so keep that in mind. Okay? There's only four screws holding this cover on though so yeah all right this screw is really tough jeez okay all right it's coming out but it's slipping a bit so i'm worried hopefully it doesn't get messed up there we go okay so we got those three and then we got the last one here So now we got those four screws out. Next, we're going to pop this cover off. So hold this down and basically just pull this up really hard, okay? Just like that. Sounds like it's breaking, but don't worry. There's two clips there and two clips there. All right. Comes off just like that. All right. That's what this looks like. There's these that hook into this. So when you put it back, you do have to hook the top in first. And then you basically swing it down. And we're going to click that back in, but let's go ahead and take a look. The customer's hard drive is dead on here. Um, there is, uh, is there two slots of RAM? Yep. There's two slots for RAM, but only one's being used. You can pull these two tabs aside and the RAM stick will pop up. And this is a four gig PC3 10600S. All right, I don't know why the customer wants to upgrade this computer. I'm going to see if I have some matching RAM here for that customer so they can have 8 gigs at least. So give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. I had these PC3 10600S. So same speed, so we shouldn't have any issues with compatibility. Let's go ahead and install this, all right? So it has to go in at an angle. It's a little bit tricky because the thing the edges around are raised so high so yeah it's also difficult because i have the camera in my way but there you go okay make sure you push it in and then click it down i know sorry i'm like zoomed out really far um but if you don't know how to replace ram i don't know what to tell you let me zoom in a little bit more and see if that helps all right so there you go we can zoom in a bit more we're gonna go ahead and get this one in as well it just goes in at an angle into that slot. Make sure you push it in all the way. I like to kind of push it in and then kind of wiggle it a little bit to make sure. And then click that down. So there we go. All right, hard drive now. So let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so hard drive. We got two screws here and two screws up here. Let's go ahead and remove them. I think I might have to switch actually to a smaller screwdriver. Let me go get the bits. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So I switched over to a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver. We're going to remove these two screws down here and then the two screws on top. Hopefully that'll be enough to remove the hard drive. Okay, it looks like these screws actually um, stay attached to this thing. So you just undo it um, until it kind of stops. And that's it. Okay, so there you go. It's like clicking. All right. So there's those four screws. 
And now there's this little thing here, which you don't really need to use this pull tab. You can lift from anywhere. If you can even just grab this and lift it, that's good enough. You basically, we're going to just get this up and we're going to disconnect the two cables here. Okay. So I'm going to use my thumb and I'm going to pull these. Okay. It's a little bit difficult because of the cramped space, but you got to pull this out before you pull the drive up because you don't want to yank these cables and damage them. Okay. So there we go. And actually, the cables go, okay, so they do kind of pull out a little bit far, and then it looks like they route under and then go over this way. So um, there's a plastic hook here holding it, though. Okay, so we're going to upgrade this to an SSD um, right now. So let's go ahead and take the four screws out. This is a 3.5-inch SATA hard drive. I don't know if they have a uh, screw doesn't look like there's screw mounts for a two and a half inch SATA hard drive um, or SSD. So what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to find a way to mount it on here. Maybe we'll just use some tape rolled backwards and that should be good enough. You're basically just want to hold it into this place so that the um, connectors are in the right spot. Okay, so we'll get these all disconnected. Three and the last one here. All right, so we got all four there, and then the drive should fall out, but I guess it doesn't. Maybe it's too old, the rubber stuck to it, so we're going to get underneath here. I'm going to keep my hand on top so it doesn't fall out, and we're going to just lift that up. And there we go. There's the hard drive. All right, we're going to set that aside. The customer um, was saying that they wanted their data. Oh, interesting. They put these little spring things here to kind of help absorb some shock, I guess, but I don't know. I guess the rubber helps and then those springs. Okay, let me go grab an SSD and I'll be back. Um, I don't know if we're gonna need to mount it on this or not. Um, technically SSDs don't have any issue with the little bit of vibration from shaking around, but um, just to keep it kind of more um, tidy, I'm gonna see if I can stick it on here. All right, I'll be back. All right, so interestingly enough, um, actually some of the screw holes line up pretty nicely. So the side one, I put this screw here and then there was one on the other side here and there's actually one more here. So I'm just gonna use these three screws and that will perfectly hold that in place. At least it looks like it. <laughs> okay, all right. So kind of tighten it. You don't want it to be loose because you don't want these screws to fall out and start rolling around inside there. Okay, so we're going to tighten those up. And yeah, look. That's I don't think that's going anywhere. All right, this side's not even secured down with a screw and it, it's held in really tight. All right, so we got the two corners basically secured in place. And now we can turn this around, get this all plugged back in, and we're just going to install Windows to that. Um, I forget how to do that on Sony computers. Um, it might be when there's no OS, it's going to automatically boot from USB. Uh, this is from an older time, Windows 7. I'd have to look up online how to boot from USB. Usually it's going to be like F12, F10, F9, something like that. Um, I think Sony Vio had like some menu at the beginning where you like press enter. Um, but it's been so long since I worked on Sony laptops and computers. Um, some of them have like a special button, but this is a all-in-one kind of screen thing. So I think that's what the guy meant, all-in-one, but he was calling it three-in-one for some reason. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if this thing has touchscreen. It probably doesn't. Um, but yeah, anyways, we're going to just tighten this down. Now the customer has an extra 4 gigs of RAM. He has 8 gigs total. Um, and then we have an SSD, and that should make this thing super fast. He's probably going to be, like, amazed, like, how much faster it is compared to before. He'll probably be like, what? What is going on? All right. Um, anyways, I'm kind of curious if he's going to... I mean, you can probably find two 8-gig sticks and upgrade them to 16 gigs RAM if he really wanted to, but, I mean, he only was asking for the hard drive replacement and install windows and also seeing if I could recover data, but his hard drive is toast. So yeah, anyways, I hooked those things in and then now we got this and you're gonna push down here. You wanna kind of push inwards as you push down to get those clips just like that. Same thing over here, 
Okay. And there we go. Now we got the stand all snapped back in. We're just going to get the four screws back and we're good to go. All right. So let's get these four screws. The hard drive, um, he can send into a data recovery place if he wants the data. Um, but yeah, that thing's dead. Okay. So we're going to tighten that in. These screws, again, are super difficult to twist in and out, um, but make sure you are threading it right. Don't go at an angle. So you can tell because when you start to screw it, it's really easy to screw it in. But then as you get closer to the blue thread locker stuff, it becomes a lot more difficult. Okay, there we go. Camera's in my way. My arm's going to be in your way. <laughs> All right, I had to switch to my right arm. I'm left-handed, but it's easier to twist that way with the camera in my way. Okay, let's go ahead and get the last one here. All right, and that's pretty much it. I don't think this has the special button. Let me see. I'm going to see if I can figure out what to press on here, and then I'll probably let you know, but... uh. Let's see. Oh, it does. It has the assist button. So you power it up and then you press the assist button and you should be able to start it up. So I'm going to go do that. I'll be back if if there's anything strange with the process. All right. You do need a Windows USB installer. So keep that in mind. And yeah, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right. Moment of truth. Let's go ahead and press the assist button. Where is that? Nope. On this side, right? Okay, got the assist button. Press that. It's turning itself on, as you can see. Yeah, I'm sitting on the ground because I got too much stuff everywhere. I don't have room for this giant thing. Okay, and there we go. It's already booting from my USB. And we should be good. We just got to install Windows now. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.